I'm uh, Monica Zatarski. I'm a pharmacist, and I own MD Custom RX with my father, John. Um, we are a compounding only pharmacy in Brookfield. And so our, our niche is to meet individualized needs through customized medicine um, to help problem solve, help, help, um, help people out when what's available commercially um, isn't quite doing the job. That's our niche. And one of my areas of, of that I'm passionate about is bioidentical hormone restoration. And what I've slowly learned over, um, I've, I've been involved with consulting with patients for almost a decade already. And what I've learned is that there's so much more to hormone restoration than just giving somebody some hormones, some estrogen, progesterone, or testosterone. Um, and I came across this fabulous book called The Hormone Diet by Natasha Turner. Has anyone here read this? All right, well, it, it inspired me, and I wanted to talk about it. So this is only my second time giving this talk, so I apologize ahead of time if I'm still a little scattered. Her book contains a phenomenal wealth of information, and I had to redo my objectives about 10 times in order to hopefully get you some um, good information in, in about 30 minutes. Um, so my email address is up there. Uh, I'm Monica RPH at MD Custom RX. So please email me if I don't have time for, to entertain questions today, um, or if you want you know want to talk about something more specific or need to reach out to me because you didn't get the handouts. There's two handouts floating around. They look the same, but they're different. One is called the Glycemed Food Ch Choices, and the other is called the Health Hormone Profile. So if you didn't get those, just send me an email. I apologize, I didn't make enough copies. So today I'm going to talk about the hormone diet, which is um, based uh, strongly on this book by Natasha Turner. And I'm going to talk about a whole lot more than just food that is important for hormonal health. Um, I'm also going um, to tell you how important hormones are in affecting our, our weight and our ability to lose um, fat successfully. Um, hormones control our appetites. They stimulate our metabolism. They're important in achieving and maintaining um, hormonal balance. So hormonal balance plays an essential role in, a, in being able to achieve fasting or lasting fat loss. Diet and exercise are important, but so is sleeping well reducing our toxins, maintaining healthy liver function, optimizing digestion, limiting stress, and conquering inflammation. And a lot of these things have been already touched on today. Um, so we might think we can get healthy by losing weight, but I am here to argue that we actually need to be healthy in order to lose weight. My goal today is to talk about the seven factors that can cause obesity and interfere with weight loss. Um, I want to talk about the three-step fix, as uh, Dr. Turner calls it in her book. I want to reveal to you which hormones are our fat-burning friends and which are our fat-burning foes. I want to reveal some key supplements that we all need in order to maintain health and prevent nutritional deficiencies. I'm going to talk about choosing the right foods at the right times and the right amounts, and then also talk a little bit about exercise. So if you have the health hormone profile um, checklist handout, on the very last page is a, cop, um, a copy of this pyramid. These are the seven factors that cause obesity and interfere with our ability to lose weight. And they are rated in importance and, and uh, visualized there for you as a pyramid because that you need a healthy base in order to have success with anything on top. So these are, in order of importance, inflammation, mood and food hormones, stress and anti-stress hormones, sex hormones, metabolism, renewal, and strength. No matter how any imbalance manifests on the outside of our body, the internal reality remains the same. Any and all hormonal imbalance leads to a difficulty in losing weight and an increased risk of obesity and unhealthy aging. Long-term weight loss and wellness are next to impossible until you bring your hormones back into balance. And I don't know if you can um, see it well up on the screen. Um, if you have the handout in front of you, that's, that's better. But there are a lot of different hormones here um, that 
and all of these play a role in our ability to lose weight and maintain healthy weights and be able to lose um, excess fat. Um, inflammation in of itself is first and foremost the most important thing we need to control. Um, inflammation not only makes us fat, but it, it could be argued that inflammation is the cause of disease. Uh, inflammation causes cancer, heart disease, obesity, osteoporosis, Alzheimer's disease, autoimmune disease, diabetes, stroke, and even wrinkling. <laughs> so, um, and I don't know if I already um, uh, hit on this hard enough, but when you go through and you do your hormonal checklist, um, you're, you're gonna, you go through and you read all the different symptoms in each of those categories and then you add, a, add up how many check marks you made. And then if your score is greater than the warning score, that's an area that you need to focus on. And so um, if, you, if you had scored highly in, let's say, low, low thyroid, which is up there on the one, two, three, four, fifth tier of the pyramid, and you scored high in excess estrogen, and you scored high in excess cortisol, and you scored high in inflammation, well, we need to start at the bottom and work our way up in order to develop that strong foundation for optimal success and optimal health. Otherwise, if you tend to start at the top, it's like building a house on sand. You don't have that firm foundation, and, and there's going to be a lot more stumbling and, and structural problems. So the three-step fix is um, uh, broken down in um, three steps. Step one being renew and to revitalize. Step two, replenish your body and balance your hormones. And step three, restore strength, vigor, and, and radiance. Sounds pretty good, right? So step one, renew and revitalize. First and foremost, we need to sleep. I think Dr. Pickell touched on it this morning, how important sleep is for stress recovery. We need superb, superb sleep for optimal hormonal balance. I would argue that you need at least seven and a half hours of uninterrupted sleep. You need to wake up feeling rested in the morning. Um, and if, if you're able to do that, these are all the benefits that come from being able to sleep. You tame cortisol and calm your nervous system. You replenish DHEA. You reduce insulin and subdue inflammation. You're gonna increase GABA and serotonin. You're gonna better off your testosterone status. You're gonna protect yourself from the harmful effects of excess est estrogen. You're gonna increase melatonin and growth hormone, which are great for fat burning. You're gonna increase your thyroid hormone. You're gonna enhance your appetite control and increase acetylcholine all from sleep. So first and foremost, we need to get sleeping. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time today to get into how we sleep. So if that's a concern of yours, that's why I'm giving out the email. There's a lot we're going to touch on today that I can't really give you all the answers today. But if you need to reach out for help or next steps, please feel free to email me. The second part of step one is the revitalize. It involves um, doing some sort of anti-inflammatory detox. Um, this is so important because, again, I, I'm, it's going to be repeated a lot through this talk, and I already told you, inflammation is, is the base. The so, so many of us have some degree of inflammation in our body that needs to be controlled um, in order to, to be successful. There's a lot of different um, detox programs out there. Um, you're going to want, uh, my suggestion is, is you're definitely going to want to find one that focuses on not only cleansing the, the gut, but also the liver. And um, it, it's nice to choose one that's around three weeks long or 21 days. Um, you may have heard the, the slogan that it takes 21 days to make or break a habit. Um, so a lot of what's involved with doing a anti-inflammatory detox is removing a lot of these food allergens, um, things that can elicit inflammation in the body. And if you do that for 21 days, you tend to be a lot less likely to fall back into your old eating habits. Um, the reason we want to do a detox is to help um, rid our body of, of toxins. Toxins are hormone disrupting. They're also fat packing because they elicit inflammatory responses in our body. You can think of it this way, toxins make us fat. 
Another thing is that we have these cool, cool things on our cells called PPARs, or P, I'll call them PPARs today, okay? That stands for perioxome proliferation activated receptors. And these things are key in burning fat. They help regulate our blood sugar levels and they help balance energy. And we have the most PPARs in our body, in our muscles and in our liver. How many of us realize that our liver is a fat burning organ? Pretty cool. Um, and so, if you're, if um, the the thing is, is that there's two two big things that interfere with the ability of PPARs to burn fat, and those are hormonal imbalance and inflammation. That's right. That's right. So um, by uh, starting uh, to reduce inflammation right off the bat in step one by doing a anti-inflammatory detox is already starting to rev up our PPARs so we can get more fat, fat burning. Besides that, um, an anti-inflammatory detox um, is also going to help clean out and, and heal the digestive tract. Um, in the short term, a, a damaged digestive system um, Elicit, uh, has symptoms like gas, bloating, pain, also weakened immunity and allergic symptoms. But in the long term, if your GI system is compromised, it can lead to toxic weight gain, obesity, allergies, depressed immunity, autoimmune disease, ADHD, depression, joint disease, um, and inflammation. Um, uh, um, a doctor put it to me this way once, you are what you don't excrete. <laughs> and if we're not pooping after every meal, we are toxic. Um, and so um, the, doing a detox like this will, um, so it's going to improve our hormonal balance and fat burning with a better functioning liver. We're going to um, relieve the, get relief from the effects of excess estrogen. That's because we need our liver and our guts in order to help us metabolize and excrete estrogen. And if we're not, if our liver and guts aren't functioning primo, then we're just recycling and, and storing up estrogen. Detox is going to help reduce insulin and lessen inflammation. It's going to restore serotonin activity and enhance our mood, memory, and focus. It's going to maximize the activity of thyroid. It's going to support the breakdown and clearance of cortisol in our body. And it's also going to help us with um, better appetite control and freedom from cravings and enhance our fat burning. The last part of step one is to reduce stress. Um, and Dr. Pekel did a lovely um, job of telling us how, what stress all does to our body and gave some great tips on how to um, support or survive stress because this is where I wish I had that magic wand and I could just wave it and remove all stress, but I haven't found that yet. And stress continues just to be a part of life. Um, but the bad part of stress is that the stress hormone cortisol that's released in response to stress that activates a very strong response in our brain, um, and it matches our perceived stress with an equal desire to eat comfort foods. And unfortunately, comfort foods typically are very high in carbs and fat, and they, they result in a spike in insulin, which leads to the accumulation of belly fat. Um, some great tools that I have found um, in terms of helping to support stress reduction and stress handling is a book called Adrenal Fatigue by Dr. James Wilson. Um, even if you don't classify into that adrenal shutdown that we call adrenal fatigue, he still gives a lot of great tools on how to identify and cope with stress. Um, we also, I also suggest doing a diurnal salivary cortisol test. We want to look at cortisol diurnal, so th that means throughout the day. Cortisol should be highest in the morning and taper off and get to its low point right before bedtime. So if you measure it, you should look at it throughout the day so you get a good picture of adrenal function. And salivary is, is preferred because um, just the stress of going in for um, laboratory work or blood draw or, or the stress of the actual pain involved with the vena puncture can falsely elevate cortisol. So saliva can be a bit more accurate. <clears throat> also, I like to caution about the stress involved with over-exercising. Um, yeah, people tell me, they'll come in, I exercise like crazy and I can't lose fat. And it just makes me cringe because 
studies have proven that if we do strenuous exercise for more than 40 minutes at a time, that the result of that is a extremely heightened cortisol release by the adrenals. So you can be counterproductive. Um, I also, um, I, I'd reiterate a lot of the tips that Dr. Pickell gave this morning too. You wanna identify activities that you can do that immediately lessen stress when you find yourself in a, a stress heightened situation. You know, things like deep breathing, meditation, um, gentle exercise. Um, you gotta sleep well, you gotta eat healthy, um, get massages, you gotta laugh. Laugh is phenomenal at supporting adrenal health. Um, for me, it's prayer. Um, I found that if I can turn these stresses and worries over to, to the big guy, then uh, that does a lot to reduce my immediate stress. I also um, find setting goals very helpful. Um, if you don't, if, if you feel like everything's coming at you from every direction, sitting down and kind of writing things out and setting goals can really um, help straighten out the chaos of life, if you will. And then try to be positive. Um, Dr. Pickles, um touched on this too. It, it really is mind over matter. If you can find a silver lining or some a small amount of positivity in any negative circumstance, that does a lot. It can, you, you end up like fooling your body into thinking this isn't quite as stressful as it as it really is. <clears throat> so if you can control stress or your body's response to stress, you're going to benefit by controlling cortisol and calming your nervous system. You're going to replenish DHEA. You're gonna reduce insulin that results in better craving control and that's gonna increase your ab fat la loss. You're gonna increase GABA and dopamine and serotonin. You're gonna help um, support testosterone and protect your body against the harmful effects of ex excess estrogen again. You're gonna increase melatonin and growth hormone, um, which I mentioned before, they're great nighttime fat burners. You're gonna maximize the effects of thyroid and improve your appetite control. So this gets into the eating um, part of the glyce, uh, the the um, the hormone diet, if you will. And this this is a term that Dr. Turner coined called the glyce med approach. And this is combining the um, the rationale behind eating low glycemic load foods um, in combination with like a Mediterranean type diet. Um, and that's where that second handout I gave you comes into play. Um, I listed several different food areas and just gave, it's not an exclusive list, you, can, you know, there's things you can eat that aren't on that list, but it gives you an idea of um, what sample serving sizes, sample foods, and it also gives the fiber content of a lot of these foods because that's another um, thing that's really important is eating um, high amounts of fiber. So step one is you wanna avoid these hormone hindering foods. And the things on this list are things you wanna avoid about 80% of the time. And num number one is all things white. White flour, uh, white sugar, white potatoes, white rice. And this is because refined sugars and grains cause, um, again, an inflammatory response by raising blood sugar and insulin levels. You also want to um, uh, minimize or avoid 80% of the time saturated fats that's found in full fat dairy products and red meat. And that's because excess saturated fats, which again are found in meats, shellfish, um, egg yolks, and dairy products, promote, arachidonic, uh, promote inflammation because of the arachidonic acid content. Arachidonic acid is, is a necessity that we need for life, but too much of it causes inflammation. So as alternatives, you can choose omega-3 eggs, uh, low-fat milk and cheese, and lean cuts of meat, and that'll lessen the inflammation. Um, you also want to avoid large fish, known to be high in mercury. You want to avoid raisins, figs, and dates, because these fruits ha have um, incredible levels of sugar in them. You want to avoid non-organic um, lean meats and consume coffee as a treat. This is one I'm personally working on. <laughs> and organic coffee too, if you can. These are the foods that you need to avoid 100% of the time. Number one is processed meats and luncheon meats. These are things like your lunch meat, your hot dogs and sausages. They contain nitrates and, and sulfites that are associated again with an increased inflammation, thank you. You also want to avoid trans fatty acids. Um, 
The interesting thing is that um, we all we've, we've talked a couple times today about omega three fatty acids, but omega threes um, have a cousin called omega six, um, and omega six is exists in things like um, sunflower oils and safflower oils, and um, we need omega sixes too, but they they ideally need to be in a one to one relationship with omega threes, and right now the average American has a ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 of like 25 to 1. And this is bad because, and, and, and that's because we get most of these omega-6 by the oils that are used in like things like baked goods and prepackaged foods and things like that. And you don't want too much omega-6 because um, they turn on hormonal signals that are involved again in inflammation and they s stimulate abnormal cell growth, which in its most worrisome form, form is cancer. <clears throat> you also want to avoid peanuts um, and fructose sweetened foods, especially foods containing that wonderful high fructose corn syrup. Um, also beware that sweeteners can, uh, can hide. Um, it's interesting that if you start reading labels a little closer, you find them in your salad dressings and in your breads and pasta sauces and breakfast cereals, so be sure to look at labels. But high fructose corn syrup um, is particularly troublesome because it lowers the hormone leptin. Leptin is secreted by our stomachs um, to signal to our brain that we're full. And high fructose corn syrup um, lowers this, so we never get that message. We never get the message that we're full. So we're not only consuming high calorie dense foods, but then we're consuming more of them because we never get that I am satiated, I am full effect from them. <clears throat> um, the high fructose corn syrup also increases the production of fat in your liver and causes fat accumulation, contributes to fatty liver, and it also blocks, it turns off those PPARs, those fat burning components of our cells. You want to avoid foods containing aspartame and artificial sweeteners. Um, this too is, is remarkable. Art artificial sweeteners cause a paradoxical weight gain. You think you're doing something good because you're, you're lowering the amount of calories that you're consuming, but the body knows sweet. It knows what to do when it tastes sweet. Um, and there was a study done in the University of Texas, San Antonio. They found that um, they found people that ate two or more, or drank two or more low calorie or no calorie um, soft drinks raised their odds of becoming overweight by 65%. And this was compared to people who are drinking regular sodas. Okay. Um, and this is so big because artificial sweeteners, again, they also don't allow for that release of leptin from the stomach. So we never get that signal that we're, we're satisfied. Um, and then again, they, they don't cause your blood sugar to rise, but your body still knows that it's tasting sweet, so it still releases that insulin response, and that, again, leads to inflammation. You wanna avoid farmed salmon because uh, of the toxins involved that are contained in that 100% uh, of the time, and then you also wanna avoid um, foods containing artificial coloring, preservatives, sulfites, and nitrites. You wanna eat your meals at the right time of the day um, you want to shoot for every three to four hours at the same time every day. Um, timing your meals this way will improve your fat loss by preventing excess insulin. Um, you're basically stabilizing your blood sugar. You shouldn't ever feel hungry. Um, this really allows leptin to work its magic on appetite control and, con and controlling your metabolism. You want to eat within one hour of rising. And that's because, um, again, you worked so hard to start sleeping, right? That's the first thing you did. And so you're going about eight hours of fasting. You haven't eaten for eight hours, and so you really need um, to, to fuel your body to get going for the rest of the day. You want to try not to eat too close to bedtime. Um, I say try because sometimes you, you do need to in eat closer to bedtime to help stabilize blood sugar and things like that. But eating too close to bedtime raises your own body temperature, and your body temperature actually decreases when you sleep, and that decrease in body temperature um, is what signals the release of melatonin. And I have three minutes left, and I'm not gonna get done. <laughs> but it, like we said, the slides are, will be online, and again, please email me if, if um, you want me to elaborate more on things. 
Um, you want to eat within 45 minutes of finishing your workout, and you don't want to do weight training on an empty stomach. You don't want to eat while you're doing anything else, and that's because when we eat, when we're multitasking and we're eating while we're working at our desks or we're eating while we're watching television, you're you're not in you're not as in tune to that release of leptin that finally tells us to stop eating, and so our, we're more likely to overeat. You should sit down, make a meal of what you're eating, so you can think about eating, enjoy what you're eating, concentrate on chewing, etc. Um, eat, if you eat the protein on your plate first, um, that tends to turn the signals on to your brain that you're full a little quicker. And if you have alcohol, you should have alcohol after your meal. And you have to be a little cautious with alcohol because overconsumption, of course, isn't good. <laughs> um, so it's usually recommended that women have a f four drinks a week or and men can have seven. Um, the reason you don't want to drink alcohol with your meal is because of its um, how it reduces our um, inhibitions we then can tend to overeat but if we eat it after we're done eating we know we're fill, full then it works like a digestif and it'll help digest our foods um, but alcohol abuse does wreak havoc on our hormone balance um, it increases insulin resistance uh, it also um, decreases testosterone in men and in both men and women, it increases the conversion of testosterone to estrogen, um, so it causes estrogen dominance. So use alcohol with caution. These are all the goals that you'll, um, all the benefits you'll receive by eating this way with the glycemic approach. Um, I'm just going to jump forward. I might go back to that. But these are the three take-home points with eating glycemic. You want your plate to look like that, about three quarters full of vegetables and, and one, um, sorry, two thirds vegetables, one third protein. Uh, and then you can top it off with some healthy um, fats and seasonings. You want to drink a lot of water. Um, a, the easy equation to find out how many cups of water you should drink is take your weight in pounds, times, multiply that by 0.55. And then divide that final number by eight to find out how many cups of eight ounce cups of water you should consume in a day. Water uh, helps with, with uh, burning fat because it keeps our kidneys functioning optimally. And if our kidneys are primed, then our liver is better off to do what it's meant to do. And one thing the liver's meant to do is burn our fat. Um, and water also helps control our appetite. I also uh, mentioned that we want to be uh, conscientious of our fiber intake. Our goal is to have about 30 to 40 grams of fiber a day. Uh, compared to the average American diet, um, we're lucky to have about 15 grams of fiber a day. Um, dietary fiber is so important because it keeps your digestive system healthy, it stabilizes your blood sugar, lowers cholesterol, protects you from cancer, um, and increases weight loss in your hormonal balance. How am I, Fabi? One minute. All right. I'll skip ahead to um, these are the supplements that I think everybody should take. Um, you want to have a high quality multivitamin. This is going to support your energy and metabolism and help you clean up after you burn the fat. Um, most of our toxins are stored in fat. So as we start burning it, you have to be conscious that you're supporting the body well so um, it can eliminate toxins properly. Uh, I think this has been repeated several times today is taking that omega-3 fatty acid, but the omega-3s determine the um, composition of every cell. We have lipids that, that surround every cell in our body. And so if we have um, more um, cell membrane lipids, then our, then our cells become more fluid and they're more receptive to insulin. The more insulin receptors you have on your cells, the lower your insulin levels become and the more pr prone you are to um, uh, to weight loss. Uh, you also should be on a, a good chelated calcium and magnesium and as well as vitamin D3 and I would say to pair that with um, vitamin K2 too in order, K2 also, in order to um, get the biggest bang for your buck there too. Hormonal balance all has to, um, restoring hormonal balance all has to deal with um, how you score in this pyramid, um, and you need uh, to be hormonally balanced here too. This is a, an entire day's worth of lecture material right here. Um, so I, unfortunately, we're just gonna have to fly through that. But these are our fat loss foes. 
um, too much insulin, cortisol, estrogen, and being low in estrogen um, are all going to prevent us from losing fat. And if we have all these, if we have all our friends, thyroid, progesterone, DHEA, testosterone, growth hormone, serotonin, melatonin, dopamine, acetylcholine, GABA, leptin, and vitamin D3, then we're going to be um, best equipped in order to burn fat. Unfortunately, I don't think I get to talk about sex too much, but we need sex. I get, missed, I get mixed reactions when I say that. <laughs> I've actually gotten groans before. Oh, man. Um, but if you don't use it, you lose it. Um, and then if you lose it, you don't want to use it. So. Um, but sex actually helps us um, burn fat and um, remain healthy on, on several levels. Um, you also need to, to sweat. You do need to exercise. Um, it burns calories, builds muscle, um, stimulates our fat loss friends, reduces our fat loss foes, it increases our PPARs. Um, and these are my uh, guidelines in terms of exercise. You want to do three days a week of 30 to 40 minutes of strength training, once or twice a week, that's 20 to 30 minutes of cardio, and once a week, preferably twice if you can get another day in there of 30 to 90 minutes of yoga. So it's not a lot of strenuous, run your heart out type of exercise. It's a lot more focused on um, weight, weight training and building muscle mass. You want to avoid um, uh, chemicals in our skincare because these things are absorbed into your bodies. And I'm sorry that I had to go so fast, but um, here again is my email address. So um, p please feel free to, to email additional questions. Thank you, guys. <laughs>